secret friends unite! Welcome to the Secret Friends Unite podcast, episode 451. This is your guide to the geek side, and I am Todd Oxtra, joined by Charlie Carden. Woo! Wacky, way, arm-waving, inflatable man. Wasn't that the bit for Family Guy? Woo! woo. And, Lu- and Loki. <laughs> and Loki. Oh, yeah! And Loki. Very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's going on? It's, uh, uh, man, after last weekend, holy crap. It's just nice to take a breath um, and try to clean the house because everything from last weekend is still in my dining room. So uh, that's what my evening looks like. But it's great to be here. Excellent. Yeah, we're in birthday craziness right now. Logan had his 18th birthday at the Dojong. It was great. Nice. It was a surprise birthday party. He didn't know. He thought he was actually working the birthday party because they do that. And then he shows up and his friends are all in the back. We said happy birthday. It was fantastic. Aww, and then, very nice. And we did uh, cheesecake factory for his real birthday so that was fun um nice. yeah so uh yeah and then my wife's birthday is the 14th so cool. birthday and then mother-in-law's the 28th so very very busy with that so very exciting i've got a uh, man who can vote and buy scratch offs playboys and smoke <laughs> so uh well, the, the famous pat and oswald bit was when you turn 18 you can vote and you can buy a gun so you should celebrate by shooting a hole through a ballot <laughs> That sounds perfect. Yeah, that's the way you get the right. You don't have any chads then. Um, yeah. Yes, and then we are joined by, uh, wow, I don't even know how many times it's been, but Jen Watson from Code 47 Hello. fame and oh cosplay and making cool stuff. Welcome. Yes, I, happy to be here. Thanks I for was, having me. I was uh, always bragging about mm-hmm. how just how, what a great part of Code you've become and how much I like working with you. So there is no other Captain Marvel that I've worked with in the cosplay <laughs> world besides you that I think r- really nails it because I, I think you, you definitely got a Brie, Brie Larson vibe and she, is she from the Chicago area? I feel like she is. I don't know actually. Yeah. Because I remember her, Todd, you'll appreciate this because she was in that show. Was it the league, which was set in Chicago, Nick Kroll. And she played a girlfriend oh. or something. And I thought it filmed she, in Chicago. Okay. Yeah, so I thought, and and it was one of those like, well, I'm a local, so I just I that, that's that's a question. For uh, she was born in Sacramento, California. So well, that's not exactly close. No, um, but and for some reason, Californian accent. <laughs> ca- the ca- the Californians do. <laughs> She knows exactly where every. What place are you doing there. here? I took the four hundred five to the fifteen to the anyway. <laughs> That's a deep cut right that there. Is, well, uh, well, very, very good. Well, uh, we're all here to talk about uh, the Marvels. That's going to be our spoiler cast at the uh, back end of the show. Um, we're going to talk about all geeky stuff, and we don't have to talk about a strike anymore, so we can move on. Woo! To our Patreons, those great people in our f- Secret Friends squad. We've got Friends with Benefits, Corey and HD. We've got John Sidorf, the Phoenix Sisters cosplay, and Brendan Myers. And at the BFF level, we've got Sean, Stella, and Henry Nias, Missy Merchant, and Andy Milliken. Um, and the cool part is if you're a Patreon, and, and this is this is kind of the bad news, Um Zencaster is kind of making us do ads now. They so put because us work. of that, yes. So because of that, if you're a Patreon, the good news is you will get your the feed will actually have an ad free version of these shows. Mm-hmm. If you are not a Patreon, you'll have to hear our ad pitch. So sorry for that, but it's another reason to join our Patreon, and you can get a one week free trial to check it out to see if it's worth it. But uh, that's the bad news, and you'll get an ad drop sometime in the show. So just be prepared and don't be surprised. It'll be okay. And again, that is uh, patreon.com slash secret friends unite uh, free one week trial, very affordable. And it comes with a lot of great content, including uh, my show, the facts of geek life of which Jen is a frequent contributor. Todd has contributed <laughs> as well. We take a classic season of a classic show and a handful of episodes and we kind of cut it up and have a good time. So uh, love to have you give oh. us a shot and what there was an, Oh, uh- Oh, yes, because uh, Mark just did a interview. Yes. on, and that oh, is a fantastic. Patreon exclusive. You better believe it. Yeah, so tune in. Tune in. And a lot of those, uh, a lot of our Patreon content does eventually make it to the network feed. I just scheduled a couple uh, just this week. Um, but 
getting it first is where you find on Patreon and to get it's very affordable. So, okay, commercial over. Um, but holy cow, we're, we're going all the all the way back in the Wayback Machine uh, this week for our cover on We Got This Cover, 1963. Uh, oh gosh, this was right. At, this was right before the Kennedy assassination. Because remember, it's it's always a couple three months forward. So this is December of 1963. This is dated Tales to Suspense. Issue 51, and not the most pristine uh, copy. Oh, no, you know what? It's not as bad as the fact that somebody took it against their, like, rug. Because you can see that's what's on the edge. I'm like, boy, that looks really crackly. Um, but this is Iron Man versus the Scarecrow. Now, Tales of Suspense, that was that was one of those weird ones where the numbering switches over. And this one might have become Iron Man because it like started with issue 100 or something or, or one of those. So it's like, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. But anyway, once again, in the oh, I love this. The mighty Marvel group introduces a new type of supervillain, like a shitty supervillain, because that's kind of what I'm feeling, uh, to make you gasp in wonder. What are you wondering about when you look at the Scarecrow? Thoughts? How drunk was this person? How high was this person? Did not realize there was a Marvel Scarecrow. I usually associate that with Batman. Right, exactly. Uh, anyone else would <laughs> tremble in fear of uh, the face of Iron Man's angry, angry challenge. What's his angry challenge? Like angry drinking? Uh, uh. But not the Scarecrow, air quotes. So maybe that's not really his name. Um, what strange power does he possess? Uh, stuffing? Is stuffing a power? <laughs> Well, I, I did read a little bit of the background of this comic. So the Scarecrow was actually a circus performer right. called the, who was Umberto the Unbend, or Bendable or something. He was a circus performer. <laughs> the, the Unbendable? He, he ended up helping stop a, a robbery uh, at the circus. So he, but he basically, instead of thinking, oh, I'm going to be a superhero from going, he basically said, oh, I could do better and I could do better crimes than that. So he dresses up at the scarecrow, steals a guy who trains crows at the circus, and he uses those to commit crimes. He ends up breaking into Tony Stark's house and he takes the plans for all of his gear to, and he takes a boat to Cuba. <laughs> and then Tony Stark's a very, very him. slow boat. Oh my gosh. I mean, um, talk about that, like, and why was he the scarecrow? Because of crows? I, I mean, know. very weird concept. That just sound, that sounds like a Batman villain. That sounds like an episode of Batman 66. Yeah. As a matter of fact, yeah. I think yeah. that is a, an episode of Batman 66. So that I we think he's about worse than the Batman scarecrow villain, to be right. honest. Well, yeah. In the, yeah, he's in the circus. But uh, also very enchanting is the back cover, uh, which is an advertisement for some kind of shoe, something. Make 5 to $20 a week extra operating, and again in quotes, Saturday morning shoe store. I always find the misuse of quotes really enchanting because – what does it really mean? Usually when something is like air quotes, you're saying, this is not really what I think. It's a cover. So, yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, it's a cover. We're really selling drugs. That's what's in the show. The shoes like a, like a dime bag. Um, well, and it's really I, a pyramid scheme, like selling Tupperware or, or, right. You know, shakes or whatever. Well, and look at this guy. He doesn't even have real money. He's just got something that looks like money with the word 20 spelled out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we furnish everything for free. So you get on this program and they give you a case with several shoes in it. So More shoes. And uh, it's uh, I assume this is a door to door scenario. This guy's very good at it. These people invited him in, gave him a newspaper or maybe he's selling out of the newspaper um, and, and moving some shoes. So mm, rush starting outfit. So they get so, and I can't read this fine print It's too small for me. Um, but yes, this is how you get going from the Mason Shoe Company of uh, of uh, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. Oh well, it's from Wisconsin, so wow. right there. I, I I know I know how both you Illinois and Minnesota people <laughs> feel about Wisconsin, and based on my experience with Wisconsin, I tend to agree. <laughs> it's pretty. Oh crazy. my goodness, I'm lactose intolerant. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. So no I, I guess, no would shame. you guys buy like shoes? You couldn't even try them on because there's only four shoes in this box. I mean, you're buying them by the style and then hoping that they come. They that, that, that sounds like a I super scam. Now. Oh, that's on Amazon. Yeah. 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 Right. But at least Amazon does the try or buy with this. Yeah, is the guy's probably like, ha ha ha, give me money. And then he's, you never see him again. Yeah. yeah. Eight <laughs> weeks later, your shoes show up. And if they don't fit, I, I'm assuming you're kind of hosed. I mean. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> So that oh, must, yeah. Oh, hose not included. Oh, oh no, you don't need the hose included because you're already hosed. Um, but yes, I guess you can find out why in this day and age this is not a uh, 
not a booming industry, the whole door to door sales. Uh, well, and a lot of those ads in comic books were not anything like real. Either, right. You know, sea I sold wrapping and, paper. I, I, yeah. I was the kid who did that because I was like, oh, I'm going to make some money and get a BMX yeah. bike. Yeah, oh, I, 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 yeah. I never got I never got my x-ray glasses or what was the one? What yeah. was the uh, what was the the selling grit magazine? That was the big oh, yeah. one. <laughs> Boys life. Yeah. Boys life. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. Well, you know who probably uh, got uh, got rich with this get rich quick scheme? Uh, that's probably our senior news correspondent, Madam Webb, 123 years young, down at the corner of Hollywood and Vine, much busier now with the strike over. But she's going to give us all the latest scoops with Madam Webb's uh, news report. So let's do it. Now it's time for Madam Webb's rumors and news. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Madam Webb. Well, the good news, the strike is over and talk about this news, Madam Webb. So the good news is you can start going on the talk shows and talking up Madam Webb in 2025, 2024, whatever it's happening. Um, you are going to be like the oh, Stan yeah. Lee of the sports Bumco, where you're going to have all of your appearances Spunko. like a, a, a shoe shine artist. You're going to be a maid. You're going to be a. Um, oh, she's she going to be uh, like Eddie Murphy monkey. in the clumps. She's going to have all these different roles. Well, she'll just be you'll 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 be looking for the role Madam Webb will be playing in all these movies, like the little cameo. So, oh, um, like Stan Lee. Got it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So she is the Stan Lee of the Spumco. <laughs> Spumco. <laughs> I Spider absolutely Man. love it. What cinematic universe of Spider-Man characters? I don't know. Spumco is just fun to say. That's all I really care about. All right. Well, let's talk about the most important uh, story on the landscape right now. The good folks uh, at SAG reached an agreement with the evil people at the studio, and the strike has ended as of, I think it was Wednesday. I was I was telling the story uh, when we were recording Code 47. I was on the road this week. I was in the hotel room kind of doing my thing, bouncing between personal and work stuff, and at like 6.58, Boom, strike is over. So I was very excited, got out there to share the news um, that the strike has ended. The four-month-long strike, how many days was it? 115 days, something like that? Maybe yeah, longer? Almost, uh, almost 120 days. Oh, my gosh, yeah. that is that is awesome. So, uh, Todd, you are the business and the details guy, so why don't you take it from here? Yes, so uh, basically they uh, the studios and the actors compromised uh, uh, basically to a 7% increase in general wages uh, effectively immediately, so that'll be where they're at, and basically a, about $1 billion in total funding. Um, that's the money piece uh, in regards to direct wages. There will also be uh, streaming residuals that are actually not like pennies on the million dollars <laughs> uh so that's the good news because streaming has been such a become a big part that it, without that it's really taken away a lot of revenue for 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 actors and people in the industry so that's the good news so there will be streaming revenue now which is fantastic uh which means a, a big deal for everyone i don't know if it's retroactive but going forward i assume they'll be getting those new uh fees and then the other part that was a big portion of this was uh, consent and compensation guardrails for yes. the use of AI. Absolutely. So uh, this basically means that when you sign in for a project, um, you don't have to decide at that point if you agree or if you don't agree to AI. And they can say, well, you didn't agree to AI, so we're not hiring you. So we it's own your or we, own, or we own your face forever. That was or yes, when like, you're yeah. dead and they can reuse you because I think that's been a big shame. And I actually in conjunction with that, Nicolas Cage was saying that he didn't know he was superman in the flash like that was gonna oh happen God. which i thought what? was so weird I'm like oh that's so crazy i don't know how they got away with that because i don't think that was any any contract so that was an option yeah. so uh that's kind of the main pieces uh, which uh and this is only a three-year contract so i think the, the the biggest hope means that they can build upon this contract in future years right um, and not have to worry about starting from scratch again yeah i mean yeah, yeah they they bargained and, and and you know as near as i could tell they they won and something had to change and again uh, i i deferred talking a lot about this because on, you know, on code 47 we talked about it in reference to star trek and kind of what we have to look forward to but uh in an overall view um this is this is incredible it's great to see the little guy go against you know the the you know president business of the Lego Movie, the big <laughs> evil corporation, uh, and to bring them to their knees because you know again what were we gonna what, what were they gonna do? Oh nope, we're not gonna have actors anymore. No more union. No more. We're just gonna 
you start doing stuff with stick figures. You know, they 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 were going to have to deal and give up some of their billions that they make off of the hard labor of these people who have created this industry. So this is this is it. This is this is fantastic news. I'm I'm super excited. And again, as you said, it's a three year deal. Um, and th- you know, things will continue to evolve in the next three years, and they'll have a much stronger position to go back and continue to fighting uh, for expanded rights at that time. So this is I'm I'm very excited about this. And Jen, you know, I I know we had discussions in the in the podcasting group about supporting, and and, and cosplay is a big part of yours and Charlie's world, and you know, kind yeah. of like feeling like how the best way to support, and obviously it's kind of glad that that's not over, but I know that was something everyone struggled with, and that's why we've continued to talk about the strike and get in everybody's yeah. mind. We made a donation, so um, this has got to be a relief for the the creative community that that supports all of these things. Absolutely. I know that there was a lot of discussion earlier in the summer about if cosplay was okay. There was a big kerfuffle that came out based on the guidelines that the strike um, organizers released. And it turned out to be a big misunderstanding because the rules about the cosplay really only applied to members who were already members of SAG-AFTRA. Right. Um, So if you were not a member of SAG-AFTRA or did not intend to be, then cosplay was totally fine. Um, Still, I saw a lot of people doing some really creative things to not necessarily support struck work with their costumes, cosplaying original characters. I saw a lot of stuff at like, you know, Renaissance Fair stuff, um, different interpretations. Um, And it was really cool. Uh, Did bring out some creativity within the community to do that and to see that. Um, And I saw people just wearing pins that was like, I support the strike or having a sign with their costume. but right now, I mean, it's 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 great for everyone. It's great for all of the creatives, um, cosplayers, actors, you know, any, everyone in the industry, really, because even the, the crews and the Teamsters and everyone else that is has a job that supports Hollywood and, and television um, gets to work again because these strikes are over now. So fingers crossed that... Uh, through the next three years, this will be great news for everyone and continue to be great news beyond those three years. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Oh, man. No, I'm, I'm fired up. So, yeah, I, and, and Todd, that does bleed us right back into the next story because now – the question becomes what comes after. You know what I mean? Uh, I, an article that I read did say that, you know, as early as midday Thursday, uh, actors in productions that had been stopped, that were firing up again, were looking at some return to work notices, you know, after Thanksgiving, um, that things were really coming back to life. So, but what does this really mean for things that, you know, got stopped cold? You know, what does that mean for movies that they're like, you know, they were teetering on the brink, like Deadpool, like, oh, we're almost done, but you know what I mean? Um, as far as stuff coming back. So Todd, you, you published this list of, uh, kind of, you know, Disney specific stuff. Whoops. I think I scrolled down too far. Uh, jump us on in please. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, so really nothing's going to change on the front half of 2024. It's kind of like what's set is what's set. The big thing that's going to change is the Marvel release schedule and right. some releases. So we're basically starting, uh, you know, after the planet of the apes, they already now uh, the king of the planet of the apes. So that will be the big like movie of the summer that starts everything. Uh, but after that, we've got inside out to June 14th, 2024. Um, the bad part is that uh, that movie is a sequel, but several of the voice actors are not returning. Uh, uh, Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling are not coming back because they were only offered 2% of Amy Puller's salary. <laughs> like she's oh. getting 5 million. Bill Hader what? and Mindy Kaling were only going to get $100,000. So they're being replaced uh, with uh, Tony Hale and um, another person as well, which is just very sad. Um because yeah. the movie does look good yeah. and they are it adding character. Uh, they're adding yeah. anxiety to the film, which is everybody wants more anxiety. Uh, <laughs> um, then the only Marvel movie coming out in 2024 is Deadpool three, July 26th, 2024. That's a big change. Wow. Uh, both fam- uh, and we'll, we'll hear about this, but uh, both Captain America and I believe I'm trying to remember the other movie that was supposed to come out. Was it, it um, Thunderbolts? Yes. Now those are going to yeah. be 2025 20, films. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, have, that really uh, burns because you know, okay. Alien yeah. movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Untitled Alien Captain movie. Captain America is my, it might, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
untitled alien movie. How do we not even know what this alien if it's coming out? Oh, in, alien meaning, meaning year, alien, the franchise, not not just about aliens. <laughs> No, no, so, no. But I mean, how do we not know the name of this film when it's less than a year away? That's very weird. Um, because it's least. it's something that's likely to get jammed out, I'm sure. So, yeah, um, then, yeah. Uh, that, you know, I, as year? as I was trying to as I was trying to say, Captain America. That that's a that's an ouch for me because I, Captain America is my favorite. But it does come out on my birthday, and uh, well, almost well, I'm almost around my birthday in 2025. So, oh, wee. that's kind of like <laughs> what happened with the Marvels. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, there you go. Now my birthday's next week, so. Yeah. Oh, cool. Happy birthday. um, Thanks. (laughs) With that, we are wrapping up the year for Disney, and these are the official ones. There's some untitled movies that some have announced yet. Uh, Mufasa, The Lion King. So this is a one of the first live action animated sequels that is not Lion King 2. Very (laughs) odd one. Um, That one's happening, so it's going to be really interesting. It's Mufasa's origin story. So prequels now, I I, I I can already hear the crickets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah just, that's just, December twentieth. It's, it's just not for me. December twentieth, twenty. I mean, Cruella was cool, but that's yeah. Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll see how that I don't, goes. I don't know if um, asked for an awesome movie. So we do have three films from Disney proper uh, that are untitled, uh, all Disney films, uh, two Disney and then one Disney animation, uh, April 5th, September 6th, November 27th, 2024, 2025, February 14th, 2025. We've got Captain America, Brave New World. We've got uh, Snow White, the live action film, uh, which is gotten kind of harangued for the images they showed of the the dwarves um yeah. which are which are did they I, I i i missed out on that good. oh so the they're, they're oh so it's kind of a sonic the hedgehog it's, situation it's, it's yeah it's yes. cgi plus live action actors so <laughs> that's gonna be a little oh um, why yeah. that's weird why? yeah then we that's have fantastic one. four may 2nd 2025 so that feels like that got ahead of some things yeah yeah, I, yeah, that's right. That's kind of shaking. The, so that that'll be a summer tent poll two years from now. Well, eighteen, God, eighteen months. From that'll now, be really. the kickoff of the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. box office. Yeah, yeah. Elio, uh, June 13, twenty twenty five. That is a. Um, I don't know if this is Pixar or standard Disney it's Pixar. animation. It's, it's Pixar. Pixar. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's going to be America Ferrera is starring in this. Uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, Moana is getting a remake, so once again, we're getting into more live action things. Let's remake remake uh, something that came out ten years ago. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, Thunderbolts, uh, July twenty fifth, twenty twenty five. Um, so don't know a whole lot about that yet. Uh, Blade, November seven, twenty twenty five. Which once again, Ooh, so make much, a scary movie. So much, so, Move it so up two weeks and put it in October. Yeah. It's so weird. Right. What the hell? So bizarre. Oh, look, here's a movie that you know I don't care about. Avatar 3. <laughs> Christmas of 2025. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very, yeah. Todd, Todd and I divide very deeply on Avatar. I, I I mostly dislike it because of my dislike of James Cameron because I think he's a jerk and he thinks he's entitled to be a jerk. And he's right, but that doesn't mean I like him. <laughs> I like I like the second film and love the first film um yeah. jen do you have a take hot take on avatar no hot takes here i saw oh. them once each they're beautiful movies that is true agree i'm not like they're not my favorite but yeah. i enjoy them like it's i'm very kind of ambivalent i think they that's how call a lot of people feel it's yeah. like they Am- happen they're kind of fun yeah ambivalent and, and everybody goes to see them once but it's everybody which is why they make a billion dollars yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So wrapping up 2025, there are four untitled Disney and Disney animation films in 2025. Uh, then in 2026, we've got Avengers Kang Dynasty, May 2026. Untitled no, 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 Todd. Todd, you, you didn't mean to say May. You mean to say maybe they don't get rid of Jonathan May, Majors. And, it, and it's Doctor, it, it's the Doctor Doom uh, Dynasty, which is the other. Doctor Doom, like Duck Dynasty? And old Doctor Doom from the old Spider Spider Ham comics, like Re- Revenge of the Jedi. Now it's Return of the Jedi. Yeah, right, right. And they're actually talking about a Star Wars movie. Uh, to which I say, when pigs fly. But Mark and I yeah. will take into that. I'm sure at some point. Uh, Star Wars movie, yeah, untitled Star Wars movie, May twenty second, twenty twenty six, and then another one in December 18, 2026. I I don't 
don't know if that's highly unlikely. Bit, highly unlikely. Two Star Wars films si- like six months apart. From, did they learn from having Solo so close to right the other one, Last Jedi? Like yeah. that was within six months of each other, and that didn't go well. I I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it was too, it, Star too much Star Wars. To wrap yeah. up all the Mandalorian yeah. like stuff. But, yeah, um, the basically the what some people think will be the heir yeah. to the empire, uh, putting together all of the uh, Filoniverse characters and and an Avengers like yeah. film. Yeah, now that you know after <laughs> the end of the man, uh, after the end of Ahsoka. So yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, two films at once. You know, thematically, if they were different, if one is this and then the other one is Filoni, well, is that is that far enough apart? But then again, the Last Jedi and Solo movie didn't really have anything to do with each other, Very and that different. was that that was the yeah. big kerfuffle. So yeah. I don't know, man, but it's a part one, part two, if you're going to have them that close. Yeah. But I mean, if anything, Star Wars has not delivered on a film promise in four years. So they've been like, we're going to do this thing. You know, I heard recently that the Kevin Feige movie is out. You know, that was a that was a quote that I saw this week. So, yeah, I put zero stock in anything movie related next to Star Wars until, you know, I see a picture of something. I need photographic proof. Um, wrapping up 2026, there's a ton of movies that are just untitled, so at this point we don't know. Uh, and then in 2027, Avengers Secret Wars, May 7th, 2027. Once again, another untitled Star Wars film, December 17th, God, 2027. No then we get to Avatar 4, December 2029, <laughs> and then Seven Avatar thumbs 5, down. 2031. So there we go. That's what Disney's got planned. A lot of untitled <laughs> films. He's really going to do it. How old will James Cameron be in 2031? 90. I mean, he's he's an old dude. Wasn't he born in the 40s? He's, you know, close to our parents' age. I mean, my parents were born in the late 40s. Todd, I know your parents are a little older than mine, but he's he's not he a young man. 54. He was born in 54. Okay. Well, he's still too damn old, and I want Avatar to go away. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, people are saying we're too old. He's still be podcasting. <laughs> really? I thought literally everyone our age had a podcast. That was that's the going gag. So, um, yeah, it's you know the further out these schedules get, the more ridiculous they are. So that's my that's my that's my lukewarm take. That's that's my Han or Luke inside a Tauntaun lukewarm take. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're v- you're very welcome. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, this was my ad. A Deadpool three leaked story details claim to reveal how the movie ties to Loki and the TVA. Now we're going to talk about the end of Loki uh, when we get into the geek easy. But um, yeah, uh, Mar- Marvel's uh, shining uh, only anything on the silver screen uh, in 2024 will be Deadpool three, which is weird because it's such a tonal shift that. Everything and this is now the M now considered the MCU, I assume. Now that th- everything is put together, I am Whoops, sure that Todd, Deadpool you're... himself will tell us exactly if it is or not. Yes, with you, those words. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he'll he'll give it yeah, give we'll us see. The, the real. We'll see if we'll script. get like uh, we'll we'll see if we'll get like a Luis like kind of oh. narration. To kind of get everybody up to speed, because because I think that's what we need at this point. Just at the beginning of a, yeah. the next big Marvel thing, to say this is what's all happened. So here we are, right? <laughs> Look, yeah. no, that, that, I mean that. Way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that would be that would be the best for people who have avoided the you know the stuff over on Disney Plus. Though I you know. I mean, who? I, I don't know anybody who watches these films and hasn't also seen the Disney stuff, but I'm sure they're out there. Um, and this film that we're going to talk about, the Marvels, is the first real integration, unless I'm mistaken, of of Disney Plus material into a film. So, um, so yeah, so yeah, I, I totally agree with you. That would be having Luis at the beginning of it would be very on brand for Deadpool, uh, and would be a fit. But this says, uh, yeah, this says uh, the TVA got word that the Kangs are gathering a new multiversal war is about to start. So they create an army of multiversal heroes, mostly from dying words, to fight the Council of Kangs. That seems very big and silly, uh, or they'd find a way to make it silly if it, you know, because it's a Deadpool film. Um, gonna be yeah dead de- yeah deadpool is a prisoner of the tva after messing with time hears about it and escapes his plan is to get wolverine who we know is but for the photo below uh to uh to come with him instead so they could become bffs oh you see that i like that sounds fine so it really they make the whole t- 
tie into Loki sound sound like very kind of incidental, but a but a way to get things rolling. So yeah, boy, they're putting a lot of eggs in this basket, being it's their only film that's coming out next year. But I I know we'll love it because the previous two Deadpool films were super delightful. So I'm excited. I don't, I don't care what yeah. they throw into it. Anything, throw throw the kitchen sink into that thing. I'm totally down with it. I'm sure they will. If if anyone can make sense of all of everything that's gone on and just have fun with it, and then we can just say, well, Deadpool made it made it work. I think that's the only way you can make all this stuff work because if you do too many serious yeah. things with like science and explaining it, like yeah. explain time yeah. travel again in a movie, I think you just got to yeah. go all in and say. This is what happened. Timey wimey stuff. Use the Doctor Who explanation. Just timey wimey yeah. stuff. Yeah, right. Work for Doctor Who Time for sixty real. years. I'm sure. Yeah, it isn't real. Time is a construct, man. Um, well, cool. Good deal. All right, Todd, yeah. you tackle this next one. This is not my scene, but I know you love it. So go for it. Yeah. So uh, an avatar that I am passionate about is Avatar: <laughs> The Last Airbender. Uh, thanks, James Cameron, for for stealing the name of this. But um, I am a huge fan of the Nickelodeon series. It's really a fantastic uh, animated, uh, uh, just event type of storytelling. It's wonderful. It's goofy. It's got a lot of heart. And uh, there was a really bad movie by M Night Shyamalan that really was. Uh, a Ooh, mistake yeah, and um so and then we did get a follow-up series called cora which was essentially the decade after a generation following which was kind of cool and which i still have not watched so i need to watch that eventually oh, by the it's same really that's what i've heard I, i've heard really good yeah. i just don't know why my brain says i need to watch that um you know but we are the funny thing is it was like me with avatar in the first place like i i waited so long and i'm like i will know when the time is right and the time was right for me to just watch all of it and it was great so yeah yeah. I, I I think it's a show that's great for all ages too. And it is. and and even though it's animated, um, I feel like it is creating its own unique world. It does a lot of really cool things and it's a very epic story, but the human moments are really what makes it special, especially through the lens of uh Aang, the main character, who is yeah. a avatar of, you know, basically uh the powers that this these people have. They have the ability to bend uh the elements, which is very cool. And Aang is just a fun, goofy character. Um and he's, you know, a child essentially. He's the next avatar. So um and it's neat. It's just a great story. But um we are getting Netflix who is making a live action series. Now a lot of people would say, oh Netflix, they're gonna ruin it. But Netflix is actually actually been on a pretty good run of doing very faithful and very quality adaptations. The one one piece uh, adaptation, which I've not watched, but uh, we've had people on the show say it's it's amazing and they're big fans of the anime and the manga. So um, and what I saw in the trailer, which there was a trailer released for the uh, Netflix Geeked Out, it looks as faithful as you would want. They have characters uh, that the actors are people of color that represent uh, what the characters are supposed to be like, which is great. And nice. they didn't, we haven't gotten anything from like a storytelling element yet. This is more like just how it looks. And they nailed Appa. They nailed um, all of the character designs and the actors. And it looks, if, if it nails everything else, I'm super excited. And this is coming out February 22nd, 2024. Yeah. So, um, so Charlie, uh, everything I've stated, is that any interest to you at all? We'll see. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to hearing people talk about it and tuning in. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just never really grabbed me, but it doesn't mean that it couldn't. So, uh, and again, I agree with you. Netflix does have a good stream of uh, actually, you know, doing the time uh, and investing in uh, making quality adaptations. So yeah, who knows? It's possible. Jen, uh, so you have seen both. So anything give you pause or are you interested? Uh, no, this looks really cool. This looks like it's spot on. Um, I don't currently have a Netflix subscription, but I will be resubscribing when Prodigy, Star Trek Prodigy comes back. Mm -hmm. of course. Um, so I, I will have to check this out. Um, Cause I did, I did watch the yeah Avatar and Korra. I watched both of them. So um, yeah, this looks cool. I did not see the movie that, doesn't exist <laughs> right it's kind it's kind of like it's kind of like all those other highlander movies that we won't talk about because yeah, there was only one. one 
there, there can was, only be one. There only, yeah, and, exactly. And, and, <laughs> right. It's, 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 it's a whole The NeverEnding Story Part 2 all over again. <laughs> exactly. It cannot be discussed. Well, it never ends, so it's... Right. Yeah. So, guess, so how could yeah. you have another part? I know. Uh, 404 uh, error, uh, brain not mm-hmm. found. Okay. Well, that is the end of the news. Todd, time to get out that Fuber app, that Feeble Uber app. Got to get down to Skugtown, Nastyville. The Geek Easy awaits for us to talk about stuff that we're enjoying this week. So let's go. Hey, Secret Friends Unite. Let me tell you about Zencaster. We use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation, too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, go to Zencaster.com slash SFU and use our code SFU, and you'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experience I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Talk nerdy to me. Talk nerdy to me. We're sitting in the Geek Easy, cover bands playing, drinks are poured, and we are ready to get our nerd on. So Jen, considering all the things that are going on in the world, is there anything out there that's making you... uh, excited about the world of nerd um well i did just watch uh the loki season two finale i know that's on your lists too yeah we can Um, talk about it now yeah um wow i was not expecting that to go the way that it did there were definitely some moments where i was like holy shit (laughs) for sure (laughs) that's really cool um i don't know how spoiler heavy we get here Uh, we can we can put a spoiler warning right now so i mean i can can stay general i can stay general yeah yeah, Um, you know that's not a bad idea since it just came out a couple of days ago so that's fair even though we are doing a spoiler cast of the film we'll uh we'll split the difference yeah Mm. um well no i mean didn't really necessarily have anything super spoilery to say it was just like i'm it's so interesting to see how that ending reverberates back through the rest of the MCU. Like, is this the reason that the time stone is green? Because Loki oh. always did this and always had this. Um, the uh, culmination of the glorious purpose that he knew he was burdened with, mm-hmm. but then didn't want um season one is about him learning to love himself season two is about him learning to love other people and by the time he's like actualized he's he has to give it up the hard thing that he has to do is not killing sylvie the hard thing he has to do is giving himself Mm -hmm. up and it's um it'll be interesting to see how this impacts everything else it's like all of the times that Victor Timely got spaghettified, is that making all the kangs? Oh gosh, you're right. If he's a little little piece of spaghetti out there somewhere, I didn't you think know, about it that we, way. We, they don't really specify exactly how this all works, right? You know, going back, you're time slipping, mm-hmm. you're creating new branches all on your own, right? But if he's like the god of time now, right. then wow. does it matter? Right. So how, yeah, how anyway, and how and where, feelings. yeah, how and where yeah. would we see him and what may or may not be the Kang dynasty or yeah. could there simply, I mean, why would they have to 
the powers that be, if they want to beg Jonathan Majors, find another at recasting happens all the time. I don't know why they really have to throw out the baby with the bathwater. Um, if they've invested this much of the MCU into Loki and multiversal things, um, I find it hard to believe that they would just throw it out altogether. But then again, apparently it's been discussed. So maybe it was Loki all along. Yes, maybe. Oh no. Oh, maybe he is Loki Agatha. All along. along. Do, yeah. do 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 yeah. do. Well, Todd, <laughs> yeah. you're the, you're you're the biggest yeah. of of the Thor fans uh cuz that's that's your kind of your Marvel jam. So and and I know Loki is your favorite MCU character so you've said. So where where do you land with all this? Ooh. I really liked how it ended up because as we know with Endgame, Loki died. You know, like I mean basically well, actually, uh, Infinity War, he died. Right. So I don't think he truly could come back in a way uh, that would work. And I always feel like death should be um, for a reason, not just for a plot point. Comic books do it all the time. Yeah. And I like the fact that, um, to Jen's point, this is all about Loki, kind of his, his, his um, journey from the very first film we saw to where he ends. And uh, I'd hate to say this. He, while he isn't, it's not exactly where he wanted to be. It's where he had to, to be his glorious mm-hmm. yeah. purpose. And I loved what they did with, uh, and I like to don't want to give away too many spoilers, but at the end his transformation mm-hmm. and how they tied nice. in everything he had to do and the way they played it out. I thought it was very uh, poetic and I thought it was very uh, well done in a fashion that I wasn't expecting. Uh, this is not a show if you're watching for like huge, like, oh my goodness, this, that, and that. It's not that this show has never been that. Um, you know, we didn't have any like weird Loki variants this time to really, right. go, oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at right. that. Right. Um, it, it, was, it wasn't really Easter egg heavy. It wasn't like, oh yeah, look no. at this. Oh, I slid in this little bit and blah, blah, blah. And here's Loki alligator again. So it wasn't. I mean, unless you are into Norse mythology. <laughs> which, exactly. Hey, right. But yeah, and and then one of the things that Loki has always been different in the comics too, um, and so in this case, uh, we could have Sylvie just be the Loki that becomes right. the main focus and the Lord of Mischief. Although Sylvie's not exactly mischievous anymore, no, so, she's right. something else too. Yeah, right. so I don't exactly. know. I, I don't yeah. know how you, you you incorporate that type of Luke, uh, and maybe that's not meant to be. Maybe it's yeah. just we move on. So I was very happy with how this ended. And um, if this is where Loki's journey ends, happy. It would be interesting. I'm not seeing a season three. Yeah. yeah. I simply walked around the rest of the evening and then the next day going, dun, 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 dun. I love his music. I love his theme. (laughs) Loki's theme is now one of my favorite MCU themes right there with the Avengers theme, I think. Yeah. The scene scene where he tried kept trying to fix things. Yeah. I really like that scene in the music. Yeah. I thought that was a really yeah. cool uh, his, way. Of, his of his, gr- his Groundhog Day moments. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, faster, faster. Yeah. yeah, faster, faster. That's good stuff. Awesome. Oh, so Todd. Um, oh, uh, Jen. Yeah. Anything else? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I mean, we re- we we watched Ms. Marvel before uh, going into see the Marvels, and I have started rewatching the Jordan Peele Twilight Zone. Um, oh, I never watched I've that seen me, before. Yeah, me neither. Really good. Yeah, where where is it at? Uh, where do people watch it at? So it was a Paramount Plus original, and unfortunately, it got the same fate as Prodigy. Oh, uh, the axe. Square, but you can find it on Prime now, I think. Oh, oh, weird. Um, yeah, I don't. It's, I don't know. But anyway, I found it on Prime. Um, it is a reimagining of the Twilight Zone that is far better than the two thousands uh, remake. Um, they, and it's Jordan Peele. So it's got that kind of atmospheric spooky kind of, but not, it's, it's really good. I think if you like Jordan Peele's movies, um, you like this, I haven't seen all of them. Um, but I really love the Twilight Zone. We've only got up to the first couple of episodes, but, um, and the, uh, third episode of the first season is one of my favorites when I talk about time loops there's another one in there Mm. um and it brings in um the political stuff it brings in I mean the Twilight Zone has always been political Rod Serling wanted it to be it was a you know 
metaphor. Um, but that one r- r- brings in like the Black Lives Matter movement, oh, wow. um, things like that. So it gets heavy, but it's very, very good. I strongly recommend it. It's oh, the cool. 2019 series and I'm rewatching it now because I awesome. felt like that. So we yeah. blasted through those movies again, his, his trilogy. Tri- it's a trilogy of films, but they're not really because they're not connected to each other in yeah. any way. Uh, during, you know, October is spooky time and just forgot how great <laughs> us was and, and just oh, forgot how great, crazy. uh, how great get out was. Cause I hadn't seen it since the theaters. Um, but then I had seen Nope more recently cause it just came out last year, but I oh, got what a yeah, great, I haven't seen Nope. God, what a great set. Yeah. Yeah. Heard I should. Nope's, Nope's yeah, a true. weird one. It's a yeah. little bit, it's less satisfying to me than the, the first two. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 not surreal in the same way. Like there's a, there's a lot of surrealism in those first two films, where yeah, nope, nope, not quite as much. Yeah, it's, I would also say of of the three, it's the weakest. Yeah. yeah. Oh, cool, 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 cool. All right, Tadio. So tell me about this game that I can't play that I'd like to play. Well, I so I, I just want to say I normally don't talk about video games, but this is more about the like Spider-Man 2 just came out. It's a video game. But uh, this is the third entry in the Sony uh, Spider-Man video game series. The first one was Spider-Man 1, introduced Miles Morales, who wasn't Spider-Man. The second one is all about Miles Morales, the second game. And the third one is the two are together. Um, and the reason I'm talking about this is because I think based on, and I'm almost done with the second game, this is one of the best Spider-Man takes that I've ever watched, read, or whatever. I love it. I think they are so, the character moments are so great. They've remixed things in a way that feels fresh, but still hits on the main parts of Spider-Man, why he's special, why Miles is special. And um, if you can't play the games, just see if you can watch the cutscenes. I know Charlie, yeah. the Star that, that's Wars what game. I'm going to do. I yeah. do. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've loved, I've watched Battlefront 2 more than once and I just absolutely adore it. So, yeah, I yeah. should. I just, one of those things that I just don't think to do. So, but, um, uh, cause yeah, when you put together the cutscenes from Battlefront 2, it's a, it's a two hour film, um, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah. So I assume there is a YouTuber out there who's done it all. And is it, I'm assuming, yeah, there'll be somebody that has probably a good HD version. You could probably watch on the big screen on your TV yeah. through the YouTube app. Um, but, um, I think that this one is really focused on Venom and Car- and Craven, and I love both of the takes. I feel like yeah. it's a fresh take on Venom because we've seen Venom done many ways. And most of the times it's been done, it's been done horribly. Yeah. Um, so I think this one's really well done. It's a scary ass Venom. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, I was surprised they went to a certain space and they did. And I really uh, and they introduce uh, a new character in a new light, which is fun. And they have a great Easter egg that involves Doctor Strange, which I loved because I'm like, oh, Doctor cool. Strange is part of this room. That's neat, too. So um, I, I just am loving it. Uh, obviously, the gameplay is phenomenal. And I just love uh, the fact, Charlie, there's like over 70 suits for each Spider-Man. Oh, you can yeah. Change the color elements, I which are it. fun. That's yeah, awesome. there's one like from the, there's the uh, Spider-Man 1612 costume, which oh, is Oh, Peter Pretty Park He's got like a ruffle. Yeah. And <laughs> right, yeah. Like well, that was a um, lad. <clears throat> yeah, that was a character that was, because remember you and I talked about that 1602 yeah. uh, on Spinner Rack on our Patreon. <clears throat> and it didn't feature um, that, that Spider-Man character, but he was mm-hmm. subsequently in the 20... Uh, in one of the sequels to 62 and then showed up in the 2014 Spider-Verse miniseries. So that's awesome. So, well, I'll make a note to go, um, go watch those story beats. Cause that sounds like yeah. fun. It's, cool. it's quite a bit of cutscenes. <clears throat> so I think, um, I think you'll be entertained and I, I don't think you miss, I mean, there's some things that happen in the world and there are also some side missions, which yeah. if I hadn't played those side missions, um, I feel like I would have been missing out because they do fill in more story beats that add on to the Venom uh, piece. And you do get to play as Venom in the game, which is really feels good. That's um, awesome. Which is very cool. Yeah. So, Great. so enjoy that if you get a chance. I will. Um, and watch those. Definitely. I absolutely will. Jen, where, where do you land, lend with video gaming? Are you a, a gamer, a console gamer or anything like that? Mm, not really. I, I kind of used to be, um, but I don't really. I have a PS2. Let oh. me just put it that oh. way. I, I, have, so. I have a PS4, and it would, <laughs> it would it would have to die for me to transition up. Yeah, because I just so, I, I turn it on about once or twice a year. Sorry, sorry. I don't really it. play anything, but I'm not opposed to watching games, watching cutscenes, watching friends play. Yeah. Um. 
So yeah, yeah, if there's if there's a good story in a game, I keep meaning to do that with some of these Star Wars games. Yeah, oh, you, you, this because I'm like I want to know what go- happens. Yeah, those are those are the two that I that yeah. I have watched as the first Cal Kestis one, the Jedi Sur- Jedi Survivor, I think. And then as I said, Battlefront two. I know that the main character that is a favorite of April, so that was that's cosplay that she wanted to take on because she liked the character so much. So sweet. All right. Well, I'll blast through real quick um, because mine is mine is also Spider Man related. I finally. Uh, <laughs> jumped back into reading Amazing Spider-Man, and again with Marvel Unlimited, which I, you know, we've done for ten years, and we use it as a basis for, uh, you know, a lot of the material that we talk about in our Patreon. Um, they're they're running three months behind, which is a huge improvement from when they started. Oh, it is three months now. Yeah, it has been yeah, for it long. Be yeah, it has been for a long time. It oh, was okay, six. Great. Yeah, no, Todd, we've talked about this. It was six. Oh, for, okay, for, yeah, reasons, for many six months. For many many years, it was six months, and then during COVID, they cut it. I think they they changed it because uh, right. obviously Marvel was shut down for a few months. And when it came back, they drew it back to to you know to really try to stimulate business in that way. Um, so I'm now up to. I'm not uh, about to. There was episode or issue 26 was the big death, which I think, I think it was Kamala Khan, wasn't it? We talked about that yes, a while Khan. back. So I, I just finished issue 25, which was super size, and it was wrapping up um, the time jump that had happened after the end of the Spider-Man Beyond, which was Ben Riley coming back and he was corporate, he was corpo Spider-Man, but they were, you know, twisting his brain and stuff. Peter Parker was poisoned by the UFOs. Todd, you remember me talking about this I, several months ago. I was, I, when sure. I was doing a big catch up. So when the, when there was a new number one, which of course this is Spider-Man volume 10, maybe, cause they're like, it's time <laughs> for another number one. Um, uh, it was like, there was a year jump forward. Uh, Peter, Peter and Mary Jane were about to get together, but they were separated now. Now she has a husband and two children. And you're like, uh, how did she get a husband and two children? Two, and one of the kids looks like her. So you're like, how did she have her own kid? And what happened was when when jumping a year past, we get kind of a Dimension Z. Remember Captain America, Dimension Z. He had a kid and there was a time dilation thing. So Peter and Mary Jane had gotten sucked back into this weird dimension. There was this villain that they kept referring to somebody from the 90s who I just couldn't plug it up but it was based on like a mayan demigod and all this different stuff so <clears throat> peter got kicked out of the dimension mary jane stayed there by the time peter was able to fight his way back by stealing tech from the fantastic four getting into a fist fight with captain america uh because they were all trying to stop him because they because he wouldn't talk about what he was doing but just that he needed to get back by the time he got by he got back four years had gone by and this other dude who named paul who was with him in the other dimension he and mary jane became a couple they found these two orphan children and they raised them together so that was the rub and then they all got home and mary jane's like i'm not leaving him even though blah 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 and so peter is just at the end of issue 25 he's just laying and then the fantastic four catch up with him and he gets into he gets into a fist fight with the human torch and punches him in the face and catches his own hand on fire and he's so amped up that it doesn't even slow him down. And I think Cap shows up and punches him in the stomach or something, and he's just laying there <laughs> defeated. So Peter's, but this is about as low as Peter Parker gets. So, and then obviously we jump into the next issue and there's a death. So, you know, that's my next read. But I think they're at issue 30 or 35, maybe now. So there's there's several more for me to read. Um, overall, you know, a comic that's been around for 60 years just goes in cycles. Nothing is forever. So this is a thing. And then something will happen. And this Paul guy will turn out to be the green goblin or something. And Peter and Mary Jane will be <laughs> back together. So, you know, you're not reading this. It, it, ca- comics <clears throat> become soap operas over a period of time. It's very much like, you know, Oh, this will so-and-so is dead, but you know, they didn't blah, 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 this thing or that thing. And so, yeah, I just read it because again, my, my, my badge of honor is that Jen, I've, I, I've said this several times, maybe not heard a show. I've read every issue of amazing Spider-Man for, you know, and there, mm-hmm. there are over 900 issues, but I've done it with the help of not only reading them when I was a kid. So in the last 40 years that I've been reading Spider-Man, um, but with Marvel unlimited, I started at zero and I just went all the way through and now we're up to, you know, we're at issue 900 or 950. So yeah, I couldn't tell you what happened in a lot of the issues that have occurred <laughs> in the last 30 years. Um, cause the 30 years before that were, were my, you know, my prime of reading, but, um, but you know what, I'll keep plugging through. You know, it's not like my failed uh, attempt to read all of the Avengers comics from Zero, which Todd wouldn't let me finish. And the same thing with the Fantastic Four. Todd, don't read those. No, you can't do that. It's not. It's not okay. 
<laughs> it's not worth torturing yourself over. I know. Yeah, the, the, some of those Avengers comics from the early seventies is like, oh boy, Avengers take on Red Wolf. I don't think so. <laughs> That's not. For We've me. seen the covers. We've seen the covers. Yeah. We can judge them. It's yes. easier to get to the covers. And then, secondly, and this was just last night. Uh, we rewatched uh, the Captain Marvel film from twenty nineteen, and I. <laughs> Had probably seen it, Jen. I'm sure you've seen it a bunch of times because Captain Marvel is 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 your spirit animal. So many times. Yeah, <laughs> I probably hadn't seen it. Since, I I maybe seen it once or twice on home video. I own it, but it's also on on Disney Plus for those of you who do not. <laughs> and I had forgotten how much I really enjoyed it. It's really kind of a sweet film. Um, it is. You know, yeah, uh, it's it's got a nice emotional core. A lot of it has to do with the what I think is particularly the overall misogyny of the Cree and particularly of Jude Law's character and him just oh God, just just taunting, uh, you know, uh, Carol or Veers like, I want you the best person you can be. And I want you to take me out with any of you. And then she force punches him into a rock. She's like, I don't have anything to prove to you, asshole. Here, get in your little yeah. ship and go back. I'm coming to kick some ass. Um, it's cathartic. It's 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 super great and i'm sure you know as a man it doesn't mean to me what it means to a woman i'm sure but still i really dug it and again the setting of 1995 jen you're quite a bit younger than todd and i but in 1995 we were we were in college yeah yeah and it it really you know all of all of the references the the internet cafe the uh you know the the the, you know the nine inch nails t-shirt and the motorcycle and the blockbuster video and the radio shack and just all the great 90s easter eggs like amazing soundtrack oh my god i even caught my wife dancing along to one of the songs on the credits and she never does that Mm -hmm. the uh the uh, what's the whole song that plays over the credits? Uh, Celebrity Skin. Celebrity Skin. Yeah, that was one. Which like. is not from 1995. It's later. Oh, you see? Is well, it? look at that. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah. It could have been, been too much later. Yeah. But, yeah. Not too much later. It was like 97, 98, oh, something like go. that. But um, no, I was about the same age in 1995 as uh, Monica is in the movie. Oh, oh, oh. my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. So I've got memories. I, you know, <laughs> I remember the, oh, it's loading. Yeah, Lo- d- g- getting disconnected. Yeah, I remember because yeah. uh, again, I live in the house I grew up in, but I would be visiting because I was at college. And yeah, my mom got a second phone line so that the internet could always be connected. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. Oh my, and the, the computer, yeah. you know, the big computer that was in that was <laughs> in the corner of the den that you know that was oh, but it's connected on its own line. So, but anyway, yeah, I really I enjoy the film. Great emotional core. Uh, I love a lot of the space stuff. And and, and if I'm not mistaken, Gemma Chan was minerva and wasn't she, she was. wasn't she the lead in eternals as well or is, she was oh there we go okay they've I, never explained it it's just she's just an actress who had another job so there you go yeah um but yeah i love it. it's like you know oh you knew all along is that why we never hung out no i just really don't like you very much and then she forced punches her <laughs> i just love the fight scene over the the no doubt song where she's just yeah. kicking the shit out of these people over and over and over again it's yeah. fantastic it, it is. is. See, I, I, I was like, that's too spot on the damn nose. But yeah, you know, it, I get it. If it's it, cute, you know what? It absolutely, it absolutely was I very. It was though. very on the nose. But I'm with Jen. I just loved it. I just it was it was just there to be loved. I Todd, it's like you know how you and I watched a couple of really crappy horror movies for yeah. Shocktober. We watched People <laughs> Under the Stairs and we watched House, and they were both bad, but it was fun. So this was even the sure. moments where it was a little yeah. too on the nose. I was having fun. So yeah, I didn't. I didn't have to. You know, sometimes a, a cake is just a cake. You know. So I, uh, totally I dug it. it. Yep. Yeah. I, t- I totally got it. But yeah, I forgot how much I like this film, and I will. Uh, I will endeavor to watch it uh, more often. <laughs> it's so funny because it, it was this. We were starting this at like eight o'clock, but April and I just both had a horrific week. She was in Chicago for a conference. I was on the road as always, and so we're back home watching this movie that we started at eight o'clock, and she's asleep at nine o'clock, and then we get Aww. to the end and the teaser is coming on i'm like oh god i want to watch endgame again she says we are not putting endgame on at uh 10 o'clock we're going to bed right now we're not gonna be up at one o'clock in the morning trying to finish endgame but i'm like you even oh. suggest- can barely stay up for six o'clock movies i know that's a tough right? one. well yes exactly it's very true but anyway um yeah, yeah that's uh that's it but yeah i will i will uh i will work that one back into my rotation i don't rewatch a lot of movies anymore either i always say anytime i have air travel especially if it's a long flight i always watch infinity war and endgame back to back on my tablet that's how how i annually watch those films but now maybe i'll throw captain marvel right in the middle she'll be right in the middle she works so all right well that is the end of the geek easy todd time to get out that air Qantas app 
got to get down to the land down under where Hologram Tina and the mutants are waiting for us to talk about the Marvels. Welcome to another edition of Thunderdome. We're sitting in Thunderdome where the mutants have been gathered for a topic or a game to be entertained. And this week we're doing a spoiler filled discussion on the Marvels. This is the uh, Billion Teeth uh, MCU entry, so I don't know the number anymore. <laughs> Billion Teeth? Isn't this like, I think a it's, lot. I think it's 30, 33. Sure. That sounds I, good. I like 33. I would not. No, I don't think anybody knows. But Lucky, uh, lucky point, number 33. Nobody knows. <laughs> exactly. So um, uh, we had a budget of $273 million, opening weekend estimates right around 47 to 52. Ouch. Uh, directed by by uh, Nia DaCosta, and I really did not know her oeuvre. Uh, so she's a fairly young director, uh, doesn't have a lot of credits, to be honest. Um, and I know she's making another film, uh, but this is her first real foray into genre filmmaking. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I can't remember who directed the first Captain I Marvel film. I don't remember either. I bet Jen's not the same director. Um, it is not the same director. Uh, it was uh, Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck. Okay, did the first one. Gotcha. Got it. Team. Yeah. Got it. Uh, Nita Costa, probably Charlie, you'd know her. She directed uh, Candyman, the most. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Yep. Gotcha. So yeah, that so was more, her, more. that was her last big film. Oh wow! So more, more of a horror land. So okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we should let Jen read the summary. That's what I think. <laughs> If you Is can she? see it with the sun blocking. Yes. Exactly. I, I yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's so radiant. She's causing the sun to burst through her background. It's amazing. <laughs> well, that Captain Marvel just uh, reignited the sun behind her. So. Oh, yeah. they, oh, don't jump ahead, Todd. Don't jump ahead. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Carol Danvers, a.k.a. Captain Marvel, has reclaimed her identity from the tyrannical Kree and taken revenge on the supreme intelligence. But unintended consequences see Carol shouldering the burden of a destabilized universe. When her duties send her to an anomalous wormhole linked to a Kree revolutionary, her powers become entangled with that of a Jersey City superfan Kamala Khan, a.k.a. Ms. Marvel, and Carol's estranged niece, now Saber astronaut Captain Monica Rambeau. Do, do, do. Very good. There we go. So uh, this film is a culmination of a couple of things. Obviously, it's post Endgame. Uh, it is building on uh, the first Captain Marvel film from 2019. Uh, it is building off of WandaVision, bringing in Monica Rambeau, uh, and also building on the uh, Miss Marvel TV series from 2019. 22 uh essentially it's a standalone film for the most part uh in regards to it's not a continuation of anything else i would say in the mcu it's mm -hmm. kind of a self-contained right film. well as you said uh, with I, with pieces coming together correct and, and I, as i was talking about earlier in the show it's the first real film entry that's taking significant portions of the disney plus original quote unquote episodic programming and plugging it into the MCU, unless I'm very much mistaken if I'm not thinking of something Theoretically, else. Theoretically, Multiverse of Madness did sort of deal with the repercussions. True, with Wanda. Vision, okay. But did yeah, yeah, yeah. it really? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was it... much more peripheral and it didn't give us yeah. it didn't give us characters that non Disney yeah, plus episodic yes. viewers. This is the first were familiar time that with. Your right. characters are yeah. going to be right. I mean Billy and Tommy, but like right. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Billy and Tommy. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah but like major characters. starring characters. <laughs> Me, yeah, main yes, characters. Yes. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. So um, uh, a lot of the returning, same returning cast. Uh, you know, Samuel Jackson, uh, Brie Larson. Um, but a lot of newcomers, I mean, uh, beyond just the main characters, you know, we've got Saber, we're in that area as well, where there's a cast of characters there, which is a, I believe that's a mix of Terrans and non-Earth uh, yeah. characters with the one guy I was who trying said to, he was 300 years old. I was trying to yeah. suss that out. I didn't know if he was an Asgardian, because the Asgardians are are ancient like that. We know Thor was 1,500 mm -hmm. years old. He told us I that. I was getting an Asgardian vibe from you know, him. But then again, you know, the Asgardians. The again, 
yeah, we get a guardian accent. <laughs> yeah, right. Everybody's British. <laughs> Ex- yeah, exactly. Yeah, just like just like all uh, you know, every every part of the universe has a British accent. Um, but you know, in, in the Ask Guardians <laughs> do get some representation in this because we do see uh, uh, Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie, which was awesome. Yeah. Um, and I yeah, I, I, and it was funny. And her little reference to being on an unintentional team was cool because there's a little little mm-hmm. little nip at Ragn- Ragnarok, which was a fun film. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't feel like the 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 denizens of the saber station that that was really addressed but it's not too far afield to simply figure out hey we live in this we live in this um you know this this cosmic universe so if we're going to build a space station they don't and they don't even necessarily get into why is nick fury there who built it who runs it is saber just the new shield i mean well no we did we got a bit of that in wandavision because that's what and we also got it in uh in, in uh uh Secret Invasion as well because we had yeah with, with going, I'm yeah, sorry with Harry that's where it ended with what now the show that nobody likes exactly. what, I, I, you know what you know what Secret Invasion is Secret Invasion is the Highlander two of the MCU that's what it is yeah. <laughs> the, well we can take away from that that's where how Sam Jackson got there because right we, we saw riding the, riding so. the little elevator I got it oh, correct and even then you already knew that Nick Fury was in space because of the post credits since Spider Man yeah, yeah. movie years ago yes so, yes like, yes. You, you, Kind of had that. Yep. You do not need to see Secret Invasion no. to watch, or a, or for any reason at all, ever in your life. No, <laughs> no. There's 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 a lot of dumb stuff in Secret Invasion. I I love the MCU. I am predisposed to like any Whoa, MCU and, thing, and so I here. recognize that. But like, there are it limits. Wasn't good. There's limits. Everybody, it was not good. everybody has limits, and where the Eternals was the limit for the films for me, the Secret Invasion was the limit of the films it, of the Disney was, Plus stuff for me. Yeah. yeah. It was very disappointing in many ways. Yeah. And I'm just so, gonna leave it at that. So with this film, uh essentially the the big plot element is that um one of the Cree leaders, uh Darben, who's apparently taken over from Ronan the Accuser, uh, is essentially trying to uh resurrect the homeworld of Hala. Uh, because uh, we find out in a flashback that Captain Marvel did, as addressed, took out the Supreme Intelligence, which if you're a comic book fan, you're oh, very yeah. well of that big head. Very, fa- essentially... yeah, very, very faithfully represented. He's, yeah. cool he's basically, movie. it's a big avocado with tentacles. That's that's what the, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. And, and they nailed yeah. it. But he also has like a big, like weird baby face. He's like, mm, it kind of looks like uh wc fields if it was if it was just a head <laughs> i don't know blubber fish what's yeah, bl- fish that looks oh, like the big face the one with the big yeah that's the, with the big the nose blobfish. the blob blobfish fish. Yeah, exactly. Um, I would love to add a supreme intelligence to my figure menagerie. There's never been a figure, so that would be there. Are you listening, uh, people at DST or at to Hasbro? I would like a supreme intelligence to go next to my Modoc. Make it happen. There might be one. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So, so that, that the main thrust is that that's what her she's uh, essentially uh, because of the destruction of the Supreme Intelligence, it essentially destroyed uh, the planet in the process because they decided to go hell bent on weaponizing, destroy the environment. They had a drought, uh, and so that's the bent. Uh, that's the big thing that hel- uh, that they want to basically uh, remake the world. And how do they do that? by essentially opening up holes in space Great and idea. doing space balls. So you have the <laughs> super maid <laughs> sucking up the environment. He's gone from suck to blow. I, I couldn't get him like, oh yeah, that's exactly what this is. Oh sucking up the environment and putting in the environment into the hollow world. The, so, the, yeah, wait, like Perrier? <laughs> like from, uh, yeah, and this movie... Yeah. That's yeah, this movie had a lot of elements that I saw in other films. I'm like, okay, we've got a Gremlins portion of this film or Tribbles uh, portion in this film as well as so a major great, plot though. point. Oh, yeah. and and there were these millennial, these two young girls. There were Zennials, not millennials. I forget millennials are more your age, Jen. And it's no offense. My yeah. kids are millennials too. But the Zennials are the young kids now. And these little girls, it was driving April nuts because they were like, oh, God, it's so cute. And they're looking at their phones to look stuff up while the movie's going. And, oh, Jen was furious. Oh. I just, why? But I, anyway, but that, that's tangent. I'm going to get off. But anyway, yeah. uh, I'm sorry. I was very much won over by the baby cats because we're cat people in this house and i was all for it kittens 
So I, I, I thought that's where, for me, that's where the movie kind of just went off the rail. I'm like, I, the pro, I, did, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand the tone of this movie. It was all over the place. It was like super serious. And there was like this. I'm like, what is even going on right now? I'm like, it's too goofy. And it's like, and I like goofy things, but I'm like, I, I just like at the point I'm like, okay, this feels like. A, I know, mean, I, I the goofiness didn't do anything for me. Yeah, the the goofiness, without a doubt, I get. There were portions of it where they dovetailed into dealing with serious emotions. Uh, Monica's sense of abandonment and Carol, because you always said you were going to come back, you never came back, and what that really means. And then Carol, <clears throat> kind of verbalizing, I, I I felt like a failure. I couldn't come back. And honey, that's not how family works. I liked that. There were yeah. there were were, were pin of seriousness and what was otherwise just a fun film you know the da- yeah. the dancing and the singing planet todd that was right up your alley i can't believe you didn't enjoy that i, I thought that was kind of contrived too it felt like forced fun and i and like i dig musicals and i and, <laughs> yeah. I, and i and i dig all of that Mandatory but for me, fun. like i didn't buy it I, I really didn't buy it i just like it did it, it felt like what are they doing I mean, I, yeah. I I appreciate when it comes to the cosmic stuff and thinking about, I mean, the universe in Marvel, it, it's easier to traverse because people can, you can go to a, you have to fly to one of these jump points and it takes you somewhere else in the universe. The Marvel universe is so much bigger than Star Wars, which is one galaxy or, you know, Star Trek, which is one galaxy, but it's very split up. Um, I, do, I just love how there's this just vastness to the mcu cosmic portion where they don't have a yeah, galaxy they have all the point they have too. all the universes out there they're they're bopping around or whatever it is even at the end of captain marvel 2019 carol's you know when she gives fury the modified pager he says it should be good for a, a, a signal for a couple of galaxies i mean that's awesome yeah. i just i i, yeah. I enjoy that. i appreciate it. i just didn't yeah. i didn't like the execute i didn't think the execution was very well done oh i, just I, I like the i like the fun element i just thought Oh, they can only sing, but they don't. They're not singing the whole time. I, I, it just felt like it failed on that level to me, and and I just felt like oh, a lot of this movie, uh, Carol felt very awkward out throughout the whole thing, and it was just a very like where I think the first movie she they nailed it. In this movie, I felt like I wasn't understanding her role in this film to a large extent, and where I thought Aman Vellani stole all the scenes. She oh, had yes. the most she personality. Over yeah. And she's my favorite character because I feel like she's the only one out there. And I, I like M- Monica as well because she was dealing with well. I just felt like Carol just kind of felt like very awkward. Even the moment you mentioned, like she said of that, like, but her her niece doesn't know any of that thing. And she should have been there for it. I saw so I, I, like, I didn't like her. I liked her less for that because essentially she wasn't there for her. And I just like, yeah, you can feel guilty and I think, but you got to man up. You got to, you know, you got to be there for your family. If you're not, then it's like, that, so that's where I'm like, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel like, I felt like, oh, that felt like a unearned moment for me because it didn't feel very realistic. Well, Jen, what did you, up? well, Jen, what did you think? <laughs> Have you yeah. ever messed up? Because that's. Oh, uh, absolutely. Exactly and it's like, but, like but it messed, and, and it's, it's, yeah. it's this, it's this idea of I've messed up on this colossal cosmic level. I cannot show my face to these people who are counting on me to be a good person. And because what I did made me not a good person. It was such a monumental failure. And whether that's true or not doesn't matter. It's that she felt that way. She felt that she could not show her face to someone who looked up to her and and, and, and needed her. And I I think that. that she reconciles that in the end by being there for Kamala like she's doing exactly what she did with Monica originally by taking Kamala into the plane and you know having a sidekick and it's she learns from her mistakes what that that she does need to be there for family and that's kind of where where that came from for me and that's one of the things that I that I like about Carol as a character in the comics too and this movie felt like the Captain Marvel comics, especially the more recent runs. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw that Kelly Sue DeConnick was a consultant on oh, this film, right. which was great uh, because this really evoked a lot of her run 
um I mean the Fleur kittens and the, <laughs> oh, what, the was, tone of her. Was that from the comics? Are, the the Fleur and kittens? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So like when I saw that fun. that egg, I'm like, oh, I know exactly what that oh, is nice. because that's exactly how it happened in the comics too. It was yeah. like there were just these weird eggs all over the place. And it was like, oh, Goose has a family. Although in the comics she's chewy, but like right. it's oh Flurkins abound. It's it, it, um, it's a good thing that Flurkins are, yeah. are a little bit in this film a little bit more discriminating on what they <laughs> um what they digest because yeah, yeah. The, the big escape <laughs> from the saber satellite is they 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 just suck all the people up but they you know at the end they just throw them up which well, is they have a pocket delightful. dimension inside of them. Oh, does that get addressed or are we just are we just making the leap? No, that's we assume. I, I think- yeah. I think that's addressed in Agents of Shield at some point. Ah, they, non-canonical. What happens is they get the, <laughs> right, so what that happens is they the they get the Cree blood in Agents of Shield from the dudes that the Flurkin gobbled up into the pocket oh. dimension. I mean, they never actually see it on Agents of Shield, but they kind of I that that some that external that, force that one was how they got that zipping by me. I saw um, all of Agents of yeah. Shield because April loves that show. Yeah. But yeah, but. Yeah, I, I maybe they should have said that. Yeah, yeah, it's a pocket dimension. They're not actually eating you, right? The flurkins. I mean, but, because um, obviously that's how, that's how the that was the the transit of the tesseract from yeah. space back to Earth again. But yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. My my my. Yeah. So and as a cat owner, the number of times that that sound that that. Yeah, I'm like, oh, that no. was the yeah. exact like, sound, sound I got was was yeah. when I went upstairs uh, between recordings. Yeah. I'm like, oh, good. Someone's puking in the other room. That's fantastic. <laughs> Hairball time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my but, gosh. Um, no, yeah. the relationship between all three of the leads was amazing. I thought they had great chemistry. I thought just a lot of it did remind me it felt like the comics because mm-hmm. it does. They do, have, they do have that tonal shift sometimes where it goes from wacky to serious and back again and i mean life's kind of like that too and i think if you have these wacky moments sort of surrounding the serious moments it you get to kind of roll with the punches a little bit more easily i think so to speak. I just, I just, it just didn't work. For yeah. Me. I was like, no, I'm like, fair. nobody knows what she did. So she doesn't have to explain anything to anyone. And I always felt like, I, I, I don't know. And, and this is weird. No, she doesn't I, have I, to. And I'm, she didn't to Nick yeah. Fury, but she did to Monica because she yeah. did owe her an explanation. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I, I'm so used to Carol Danvers, the 30 years she was a character before this. She's a hard, hard edged fire pilot she that, is yeah, very steel true. And, balls. and to me this take feels like she, i got a lot of un i felt like she was very in on like confident at times but in like not confident and i always feel like being a military vet i feel like mm-hmm. they they've shied away from that part i feel like they've kind of made her feel like she's a little bit less steeled um in this movie i felt like she gets mad but i didn't feel like she's full-on leader like we get even in, in the Marvel comics she's the head of the avengers she is a leader at this point <laughs> i didn't feel like she felt like a leader like an air force officer is so in a lot of ways i i don't love this take of of carol danvers because she feels so different from her previous years that you know, she feels less like i would say like this point i'm like I, she doesn't feel like an air force officer you know i i would say and i think it's as echoed both in comic form going back in the day and then to really what in this film don't forget in the comics many many moons past she had her identity stolen by rogue from the x-men that was in yep. that that was when she left earth she became binary i was dying for the end credit because i could not remember the the name of the binary <laughs> character who we get it in the easter oh. egg which we'll talk about in a second she lost her identity had to rebuild it with charles xavier's help and then she went through and yep. then she's getting baby and more but in this film she loses her identity again when the you know in the first film when the light star drive blows yep. up and they take her back to Cree and she's yeah. rebuilding who she is so i would simply say that todd what you're addressing her life as captain danvers avenger uh you know fighter pilot is perhaps still removed from who she is in this day yeah, and time she so, doesn't remember yeah so it's that that's going to be different I she agree. said she I, did yeah. and she didn't want to see her so that was the thing like well she didn't want to see her and you know i don't know i i, I, I just I, yeah. I, I, I but again it, i it, it I, just didn't work for me i don't know the the, the rationale the reason i don't know it's just like eh, okay i get it yep that's that's a re- that's a answer that's well and, and said to say based on uh based on the box office performance certainly domestically it's not working for a lot of people because this was uh, highly touted as being marvel's lowest opening i i i am you know i'm in the camp with jen i feel it's very undeserved uh this is the most i've enjoyed a marvel film since endgame you know really? uh, 
Yeah, okay. I, yeah, because well, Black Panther, I don't mean you know Black Panther two. Maybe I saw because I saw it. I was I was very drowsy because it was it was last year after Comic Con <laughs> set up. But I just I didn't I didn't really love all over that. And you know I didn't care for Quantum Mania. What are some of the other films that have come? Eternals was totally bust for me. Sh- Guardians three. Guardians Shang-Chi. three. Guardians three. I enjoyed. I, I like. I, I really liked Guardians yeah, three. I, yeah. But 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 I, yeah. But I dug this better. Uh, Shang Chi. I was eh, it was okay. Um, but yeah, this was this was this was fun for me the way the Guardians is fun. But I found this to yeah. be a, a, a kind of a, not, a notch beyond uh, that. So I dug it. I, w- I wish it was doing better. Uh, I wish it was doing better, but um, me too. I, yeah. I think it's <laughs> potentially the result of of fatigue, and uh, it's potentially from the result of you know uh, the SAG actra strike and the lack of promotion, which got to happen at the one day before the film came out. The strike ended. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's not like I think this the film was going to find fantastic legs, um, but I don't know. Yeah, I just uh, yeah, I, I I appreciate all takes, but this this was one I just I I walked out of it you know happy and smiling. I was having a good time. So cliffhanger. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. and I was going to say, I was going to give you a differing viewpoint because my wife didn't see Captain Marvel, didn't see WandaVision, but loved uh, Miss Marvel. Yeah. She walked away from the film. She, she felt like this was not a good film if you hadn't seen all those things. She felt like it kind of failed as just a self-contained thing because uh, it, maybe, it was yeah, maybe all that makes over sense. the place and it didn't feel like a very uh, comprehensive story. It felt like you had to know those things to give it context and meaning and a lot of those things. Without that, it just felt like a mishmash. I, and I, you know, I mean, the, I the, feel the, like the, they addressed all of that, but as someone who's yeah. seen all of those things, I, I can't yeah. speak to that. But, right. I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. She, like and, and she hadn't, so she's like, it yeah. didn't feel like a very good movie. It just felt like yeah. a bunch of stuff coming together versus like a standalone film that you can mm-hmm. just really enjoy take away without seeing those things. And I, I think in a lot of ways, there's a lot yeah. of pieces you have to know or you lose those contexts. And they don't do a great job of like explaining. Right. They did some through the flashbacks, but yeah. Yeah. Right. It could be, and again, Todd, you and I have talked about this recently, that Marvel used to be for everyone, right? It was easy to, hey, you know what, there's there's five films, there's ten films, it's easy to wrap your arms around it. But as it, you know, like the like the, the branches of time in Loki, it, with the TVA, you know, <laughs> as it gets too big, you know, it's, it's less accessible to John Q, you know, seat warmer yeah. in the movie, who's not a hardcore Marvel guy or gal. Uh, so th- that that could have have an aspect to it, but all right. Well, let's talk about something that um, maybe we can all enjoy, which would be talking about what happens after the credits. Because Todd, this was th- th- this after the credits that was in your wheelhouse. Mid credits, yeah. They uh, they they and and I, I'd like to hear Jen's thoughts on this because. I think <laughs> this was a tough, this was a weird one because um, obviously Monica is trapped in the gateway that was torn open by Darben um, and she wakes up and essentially in the universe that uh, the X-Men Fox films happened. She's with um, Beast played by Kelsey Grammer and uh, she ben looks over, sees a woman uh, yeah. next to her. She thinks it's her mother and we find out that it's actually binary. Binary uh, who is yes, yes. Uh, she was one of Galactus's heralds. I mean, she right. is a superpowered being. She has like kind of a red head. I mean, her head, her, 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 basically, her head kind of turns into a ball of flame. I don't know. Well, is that the best I wish I, I wish yeah, I could yeah. I wish I could show you because I have a I have the figure on my windowsill opposite of where I'm looking right now on my little cosmic shelf next to Fire Lord and you know original Drax and Beta Ray Bill and Silver <laughs> Surfer. I have a little shelf with those guys. That's on my my glass block window shell there. Um, but uh, but yes, no, you you saw the actress who plays Maria Rambo, whose name I can't remember, um, in depowered form, but she's. Yeah, wearing a yeah, wearing yeah. a the, the exact suit. Um, but this is uh, yeah, yeah. I thought Kelsey Kelsey Grammer's beast was very weirdly animated. I thought that that kind of bugged me because it looked very CGI. Where when we saw him in X Men Last Stand in two thousand and six, then we saw him again at the end of uh, X Men Days of Future Past in twenty fourteen. It was practical makeup. Where in this, he just looked like he was a weird yeah. CGI critter, and I just I didn't I didn't really care for it. But um, but yeah, it's a separate universe. It's not not either of the two that we saw in Multiverse of Madness, where we saw uh, 
Maria as a regular Cree Force uh, Captain Marvel kind of person. And then we saw Patrick, Sir Patrick Stewart as uh, Professor X because both of those characters died. So that's obviously not reflective yeah. of this because we, we get Professor X gets a name drop as Beast is walking around the room. And obviously this is a big tee up for what comes next. So yeah, I thought this resonated all with you, Jim. Yeah, I I love X Men, right? And I I thought it was I thought it was really cool. I thought that you know Maria being binary was a cool nod to when Carol was binary. Um, and it's like maybe you know things obviously played out differently in that universe. Um, but it's like where are we going with this? I mm -hmm. don't. I mean, obviously we're going to X-Men and, you know, everything's going to be colliding and reality is breaking and everything's right. going to just kind of fall apart. But like, and like, it was really cool. It was really cool to see Beast and see the name drops. And it's like, enough with the breadcrumbs. <laughs> like yeah. the, uh, <laughs> the teases in Multiverse of Madness and the little musical stinger in Ms. Marvel when they say that she's a mutant and right. like, okay, you're teasing us. And, Pietro in WandaVision or, or right. fake Pietro, which I have other thoughts on that would be a totally different fake, podcast. Fake Atro. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm and I'm like, I can see where they're going with this. And it's gonna be so long before we actually get that. Yeah. That I'm yeah, like, two yeah, come on. three to four years at least feels like yeah, yeah. Before they can get least, something because there because least. there's nothing like, there's nothing X Men related announced so yeah. Other uh, than Deadpool, yeah, yeah, other than Deadpool, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Could that now? Yeah. Now there's another question: Could this find its way into Deadpool, or is Deadpool too satirical um, to include like anything serious? This was obviously a very serious bent to this particular scene so is deadpool tonally upside down to include anything like this or do you think it's just a throwaway to something that might happen i don't someday? know i i think this is gonna be because carol's gonna want to look for monica right right like yeah she's gonna want to try to find out where she is and like with their powers being so linked maybe there's a way to do that especially if the bangle is seeking things oh I mean, gotcha carol had the other bangle at the end of the movie Right. So yeah. So they say maybe they, there's ways that so that could, could happen. She takes Kamala with her, uh, but Kamala's setting up a new team of her own, too, right? Which is awesome. Yeah. There you go. A little uh, Kate, Kate Bishop. Yeah. Kate, Kate Bishop action Kate and Pizza Dog. Bishop. Yeah. I love yeah, it. That was, that was a nice surprise. I I was yeah. like, and yeah, that wasn't I even know. that wasn't that yeah. was just at the end of the movie. It wasn't even a mm -hmm. mid credits portion, which was kind of cool and a throwback yeah. to right. the Nick Fury and Iron Man yes, discussion. It was exactly like yeah. that. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Just yeah. So leading into that, so um, yeah. it is interesting because the two characters that kind of break the fourth wall now are Deadpool and She-Hulk. So I don't know if right. that's something where She-Hulk would get involved with Deadpool because that would be a fun, like kind of a, a mashup. Yes. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah, so cool, cool, we cool. can see that. But then in the Young Avengers piece, which Kamala doesn't mention calling it Young Avengers, but in that team, the people that we've established so far are um, Kate Bishop, we have Kamala. Uh, we also mm -hmm. have Stature, which I believe is the official name of of, of Scott's daughter uh, in the the suit. That's oh, okay, the yeah. Comics. I don't know. Sting going for Stinger, in Stinger from the A two universe. Stinger. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. So Casey then Lang. we have potentially this the the son of or the grandson of Isaiah, uh, yeah, who was experimented oh, from yeah. uh, the Super Soldier Isaiah Serum. Bradley, so, mm -hmm. Yeah. The yep. Truth. He was yeah. a character in the Young Avengers. Then then I'm trying to think of anybody else. So we I've heard America Hulk. Chavez. Yes, America yeah, Chavez. Yeah, America Chavez. There America you go. Chavez. Um, you had the uh, has a son, but like they're going to be doing something with Hulkling, um, because like, that's not. Hulkling from the comics that's no. a completely different thing right. Stark could Hulkling come back and part, I mean Kamala uh, wasn't scroll. in the Young Avengers in the comics either right yeah he was he was half Kree and half Skrull so it's yeah. like uh, right that would I'm fit right in Star the would be their the original place. Yeah. Captain Marvel yeah, yeah. and yeah. do keep, yeah. do keep um, in mind there's been no project even hinted about around yeah. any of this so no. this th this was no. a true and, surprise uh, where where the X-Men bit is not States. surprising at all because we we know that, that this is setting up young Avengers. Yeah. 
they've been they because they've been introducing so many of them and i'm just right. like as a young avengers fan i'm just like oh as you keep bringing in more of them yeah you, this is coming just, together so you, much you're more just, you're just saying you want the loaf solidly. of bread you're sick of the breadcrumbs i, I I'm, I'm totally down yeah as give far me as the x-men i mean i i've been i've been waiting <laughs> for a well, long time i mean it's like I had that like this i liked the first x-men movies because that's like it's it was it was seeing the characters that I loved on screen, and it's yeah. like I would love to see it done by by Marvel. I mean, more so the Fantastic Four because they well, messed that up twice. I was going to say you you live in the space <laughs> of X Men that I am with the Fantastic Four because yeah. I'm an OG fan. Uh, enjoyed that early two thousands the first film. The second one was trash, and then because that's they, what we got. And then they right. trashed us into the 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 one in 2015, which uh, which was I always like to bring up. That was the bullet I took for Todd, so he never had to see it. Uh, I went and saw it, but <laughs> oh my god, just uh, the you know. Ooh, okay, we're not talking about that. All right, let's at least yeah, try to, no. let's at least try to move this forward. Okay, so to wind things up, Todd, shall we move forward with a rating? Sure, uh, sure. Out of uh, ten. Baby flurkins. <laughs> oh, there you go. Out of 10 baby flurkins, Todd, where do you land? Be kind. Hashtag so be kind. I have one question before I have one question before I give my review. Um, is it now that Kamala no longer needs the bracelet, right? It's just basically right. it, it right. triggered her powers, but she doesn't need mm -hmm. any more. Okay, that's what I'm gonna make. She's sure. a mutant. So, yes. yes. Exactly. So yes. just that must have like triggered her mutant ability. So that right. that's kind of cool. She she okay. was hashtag triggered. <laughs> I go. couldn't remember if it was needed or not. Okay, cool. Now that yeah. I know that, uh doesn't change my rating, but I, I had that question. Oh, so I it. would say I would give this one a six out of ten. Um so didn't do much for me really. I, I don't probably wouldn't watch this again. Um, I, I love seeing come on the screen. I thought they did more work with Monica because I think Monica's had the least screen time of any character. So right. I'm glad she got more quality time on screen. And um, yeah, I, I, and, and where it landed, um, it didn't really leave any breadcrumbs to where Carol's story's going. Quite That's honestly. true. It's going like, yeah. So I and I we don't know if she's going to be in any what movie she's going to be in like Spider Man we don't know where we're going to see Spider Man again so it's kind of like right is that it for I mean, Captain Marvel we know there's an Avengers movie coming up but we don't know who the Avengers are so what does that mean yeah, yeah who's going to be yeah. on that team so I think that's True. your best chance to see any character especially since it's the Kang Dynasty and the Secret Wars and I I feel like there's an equal chance mm -hmm. to see anyone and everyone again so just just don't don't give up the ship so all right Jen super fan. Where do you land? Oh, um, I'm giving it a nine. Um, but I'm me. I mean, look at me. I'm <laughs> I've loved Captain Marvel for Shoot. so long. I think they did a really great job of it. Um, I loved the chemistry. I loved Carol's story in this. And it's about coming back from failure um, and and, you know, recognizing that your family's going to love you anyway. Um and it was fun. It was delightful. It reminded me of the comics. It's not a 10 because it was too short. And that's not just me saying I wanted more. It's like there were some scenes to me that felt like in the edit, it's like we needed to linger just a little bit longer on it. We needed a little bit more explanation. I think that if we had a couple more scenes to kind of tie together some of the backstories, like you were saying, Todd, and to just um, sort of make it gel. And I think that might have been a result of the strike because you couldn't have anyone come back for pickups mm. to kind of shoot yeah. anything later. But I think I think it was really good. I was very satisfied. I had a great time. So yeah. nine baby flurkins. That is where it's at. I will probably echo that, not that I try to copy somebody else's rating, but this is an eight five nine for me as well. Um true the the tone the the dancing around with the tone could be a little little quarrelsome um but again overall the you know 85 90 percent of this film was all in good fun you know dancing on the singing planet uh you're sprinkling in a little bit of seriousness here but it but if especially if and again i'm not that familiar with how it went with the comics but if what Jen is saying true that it echoes the comics. I appreciate that. We don't get enough of that. We get more of like, well, this is the way the MCU is now. So, and you know, yeah. for super old school comic guys like Todd and I, who, you know, were reading comics 40 years ago, you know, we, we'd love to see as much of that kind of stuff as we can. So yes, I would, I would eight, five or nine it because I appreciated the tone. 
yet, like you said, uh, Imam Vellani was stealing all the scenes sideways. So we didn't we we had some of her family, but not too much of her family that it got obnoxious um, because there, there's a there, there's a threshold uh, with her family it where it's enough. like yeah it's it, it's en- that where it's enough it's not too much and I did like that um, and same thing with Nick Fury we got enough but not too much of him because he's yeah. he's burned up a lot of goodwill after Secret Invasion let's face it <laughs> we've kind of had our fill you know he had his chance and it was the book of Boba Fett. it was it was and the MCU's book of Boba Fett that's what Secret Invasion was how I haven't looked at. I'll, yeah, Todd, I'll please. I'll, I have one more question. What happened to the water planet? Did they refill it back up? That was like, April. That was April. That was April. Like, what as well. Are, so, is there no more water there? <laughs> well, they, it looks like they took a bit of water, and then that was all we saw. So, and then our characters got yanked out of there. So, like, we should have stayed and fought. But you would just simply hope that everything worked out fine it was sure. what's, what's the so. what's the old homer simpson quote well i'll go and i'll hide under a pile of coats and i'll just hope that everything works out sure so there you go that, that's how this one resolved hide under a pile of coats and hope it all works out um well good todd jen yeah. that's the show so uh jen my partner thank you for coming on and doing this nobody <laughs> could have done this but you you were you were our captain oh, marvel thank we you so much yeah you. we wouldn't have had this this one without you yeah. so we appreciate this where do people find you out there i've got a link tree that is linktree.com slash jen watson art there you can find my instagram my business facebook my etsy shop currently on vacation but i'll be back soon and a link to my author page on screen rant where i write about star Woo-hoo! trek and and great I, I, I love seeing you i love seeing your name in lights i love it i read those articles i don't read them all but i do my best uh so uh, todd how about you uh you can follow me at t oxtra on threads and twitter and uh let's see oh secret friends unite on threads and threads as well and yeah. it's just secret friends you on twitter Excellent. And I, uh, you can find me still over on X Twitter at the C3, spell it out. Uh, I'm trying to do a little bit better over on threads and Instagram. Uh, C3 Carpenter, again, spell it out. Uh, and then, of course, our uh, Secret Friends Dis- Secret Friends Unite Discord is kind of where the action is happening. But uh, for me, uh, again, my wife, uh, April, and I do head up the USS Grand Petoskey, one of the biggest chapters of the International Star Trek fan club in the world. We're based here in West Michigan. Recently had a great showing at Grand Rapids Comic we were able to raise almost $1,800 for Make-A-Wish of Michigan, which is something very near and dear to my heart with a great charity auction and uh, sales of tribbles at our booth, which is just, it's, 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 it's like those tribbles are made of crack. People absolutely love them. We make just, just cash by the bowl full. Um, so we have a lot of fun doing that kind of stuff. If you're a trekker within the sound of my voice, I also head up region 13, which is Michigan and Eastern Canada. Please seek us out. Uh, give a googs to USS Grand Petoskey or to region 13 Starfleet International. Drop me an email and I will happily help you find some trekkers where you live, no matter where you live. And with that, friends, thank you again for joining us. I'm going to tell you that sharing is caring and to keep on trucking. Higher, further, faster, baby. Be the hero, not the villain. In a truck. Meow. Meow. (laughs) Meow. This podcast is part of the Secret Friends Unite podcasting network. Visit secretfriendsunite.com for more great shows, articles, news, reviews, and more. Secret Friends Unite podcasts are available on Apple, Google, Spotify, and other podcast services around the world. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, you can join us on Facebook or our new Discord server, or follow at Secret Friends U on Twitter. Please subscribe to Secret Friends Unite on YouTube and visit our merch store at tpublic.com. Just search Secret Friends Unite. Thanks for listening.